Hey y'all, it's Sean, and man is it another hot day here in Texas. So if you joined me on my last video, uh, I did a little refresh on the wipers for the Chevy S10 Hot Wheels project truck. And today we're going to continue working on the wipers, and we're going to address an issue with the pulse, I think they call it the wiper pulse motor board. It's a circuit card under the engine bay. I think it's not uh, working correctly. Uh, actually, the thing is, is the previous owner, and I experienced this myself as well, um, it's kind of dicey whether or not the windshield wipers work whenever you turn them on. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they stop maybe when, whenever the wipers are running. I did a little research on YouTube, and it looks like the most probable cause is going to be that circuit board. So let's take a look and see if, uh, if it's happening right now. I haven't checked it today. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So let's take a look. All right, so let's go ahead and start up the truck. And then right here is our wiper switch. Right here on this little control arm. I'm just gonna turn it on. All right, looks like they're working now. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and leave them on. Let me show you what we got going under the hood. So under the hood, maybe you can see it. This, this little area right here, this is where that circuit board is. This is the connector. And you can see there's some zip ties on this thing. And the previous owner put those zip ties on there to make sure that this stayed connected well. Apparently, he could get in here and jiggle this connector, and whenever he jiggled that connector, it would start working again. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut off those zip ties. We're going to open that, this uh, housing right here, and we're going to replace that circuit board. All right, right over here we have the new circuit board, so this is the one we're going to be installing. It comes with a circuit board assembly. It came with a few screws here, and then it also comes with a, uh, uh, a cover to cover over the circuit board. So let me set up the camera so we can get a good view on that, and uh, we'll take a look. So I have this, uh, this little um, protective wire loom. I just kind of unclipped some of the some of the little hangers for it so I could get in here easier. Let's go ahead and cut off these tie wraps. Get those off. And then, uh, let's see, uh, maybe I can, maybe I can wedge that up somehow. Let's see if I find some way to wedge that up. Well, let's, first I guess, let's see if we can get this disconnected. So I just kind of lifted up on this and pushed it out and that came out pretty good, pretty easily. Let's see if I can get in there with this ratchet and see if we can get them off. It's nice that they gave us replacements because if I were to drop one of these or lose it, it's good to know that I have a replacement in the kit. feeling pretty loose. There's one way down here. Let's see if I can get to it. Oh, it's a little bit tight. It's probably easier taking them off than it will be putting them on. It's pretty loose. Let's see if I can get to this one. one out, all the way out, doing good. 
I'll do this one the same way. Do the one on the bottom. <sighs> oh, that one's hard to get to, but it's coming. this cover off. Well, it just fell right off. So that's good. Let's see. It's the cover. And then I'm thinking this circuit board should just kind of come right out. Whoa! And it sure did. Ah. And I see the circuit board to me looks like it is just covered with oil or grease or some kind of lubricant probably from that wiper motor that wiper motor assembly so that may have something to do with it not working reliably I'm not sure but definitely you can see it's both on the back of the circuit board and definitely on the front and also it is corroded on these contacts these are the limit switches I think that caused the wipers to stop at the upper arc and also stop in the park position of course those rotate on that so I don't think that's a big deal all right well let's uh, let's see about getting this thing put back together so let's take just a moment before I actually put it back in, uh, put the new one in. This is the new one here on the right. And let's compare it to the, to the old one on the left. Of course, this is the one that has all the grease on it. And I can see that in terms of the form factor, the position of the plug, um, these kind of things here and over here, I'm not sure exactly what those are. Um, the fact they both have a relay on them, that's good. They both have the limit switches that look like they're in the same place as well. Uh, there are some differences. Uh, of course, this circuit board is 17 years old and it's, you know, using technology from 17 years ago. Whereas this one is newer technology. This is a new one. I ordered it off of Amazon. I think it's probably manufactured in China. And it's using surface mount technology while this one is using through hole technology. So although this looks maybe like it has more stuff on it, more components and so forth, there's probably a similar number of components here. They're just smaller and they're laid out in a different area. I can see this large object here. Well, let's see, right behind that limit switch, that's a diode. And so is this one. It looks like it's about the same size. So we'll see. Uh, Oops, we'll see. I hope it uh, I hope it works. When we put it in, we'll know for sure. One thing I do see different is this one looks like where the screw goes through and helps hold it down. I would guess that's probably some kind of ground or potentially some kind of ground, and I don't see that on this side. So I hope that's not going to be an issue. So here is the new circuit card. So let's see if we can get this to sit in there uh, the same way the old one was. Let's see, maybe it should go this way. Right. Well, it seems to fit in there. In the same position so I hope those limit switches are in there good uh, let's put the cover on ok 
Okay. And let me reach in my pocket and grab the first screw. I'm actually going to use the same screws that came out instead of the new ones. Of course, you could use the new ones, but for me, when I'm doing this kind of stuff for on older stuff like this old truck, although the thread pattern and everything should be the same, I just like to put in what was in there because I know it fits. It's not going to strip anything or cause me any problems going back in uh, because it came out the same one. I'm just going to get this one in there finger tight. And then we'll do the other two the same way. Once I get these in finger tight, then I'll use the ratchet to tighten them down just a little bit. kind of hard to get to down here on the bottom I hope I don't <laughs> I hope I don't drop it good finger tight now let's tighten it down with a ratchet and this one is just hard to get to Starting to tighten up. Okay, let's move up to this one. Just double checking, make sure I got them all tight and in there pretty good. I don't want to strip anything. Pretty good. Let's 
wedged in there. Okay. Let's connect this back in. That's pretty good. All right, let's just see if these work. I'm just going to turn the key on. I'm not going to turn the whole car on this, or truck on this time. And uh, let's see. This is, should be normal. Yeah, that's working. Hi, that's working. Let's just check one of the intermittent. It's got intermittent intermittent positions. And is it going to work? There it goes. All right. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to button it back up underneath the hood, and we're going to call it good. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and working on the little Chevy S10 Hot Wheels truck. I do appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time.